once again welcome to vtv shikshana program uh, this is lecture 2 of uh, module 3 uh, we were discussing about the sequential logic uh, the basic concepts of flip flops and its uh, application so today uh, we will continue uh, with our uh, flip flops so one of the classes of flip flops are latches okay so in the previous section we saw sr latch and how the sr latch was used in the switch debouncing uh, circuit so today what we'll do is we'll try to see uh, the sr latch using nand gates okay so in the previous session we saw sr latch using nor so today we'll see the sr latch using the nand okay <clears throat> so here since we are changing the gates that is from nor we are changing to a nand gate similarly s and r we will change it to s bar and r bar okay so we'll just take the complements so in the later stage you'll come to know why exactly we have taken the complement of s and complement of r that's what we are trying to do to okay so now so you saw in the previous the same kind of uh, and nor gates but today we'll see the nand gates okay so we will have two nand gates one is the top nand gate and the bottom is the uh, one more nand gate okay so the top nand gate that is nand gate 1 as one of the inputs s bar and other input is the output of the second nand gate similarly nand gate 2 as one of the input r complement and other input being fed from the output of the top gate that is the first nand gate and this particular uh, logic diagram is similar to the right one okay so that means an and followed by a not gives me the nand okay so this is the expanded version compared to this okay but both are one and the same for us <clears throat> now we will try to see the working of this uh, latch now okay so now again when i say s bar and r bar now it is for this particular logic diagram so we have ended up with two inputs s bar and r bar okay so you can see that again i have two inputs s bar and r bar similarly i can have four combinations of that okay so 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 okay so, so you can see here s bar and r bar we are taking as the inputs okay when s bar 0 and r bar 0 we mean s and r to be 1 1 okay similarly s bar 0 r bar 1 means s is 1 and r is 0 and when s bar is 1 and r bar is 0 we mean that s is 0 r is 1 and when both s bar and r bar are 1 1 it means that s and r are 0 0 okay so whatever the value is complement of s as the opposite will be its s which is the uncomplement value similarly whatever the value the complement r as is the opposite the uncomplement r okay so that's what we mean by <coughs> now i'll go for analysis again i'll just go with the very first case okay when both s bar and r bar 0 0 when i say s bar r bar 0 means okay so its uncomplement value s and r okay are basically 1 1 for me okay 1 and this is 1 okay hope you got yes s bar is 0 and its complement s is 1 r bar is 0 r bar complement is r that is 1 so when both s bar and r bar okay r 0 0 means okay this is 0 as well as this r bar is 0 i mean s and r 1 1 okay and similar to the analysis of a nor wherein if one of the input of a nor gate is 1 means output was 0 just opposite way one of the input of a nand is zero means output will be simply one okay so you can see that the nand gate one as one of the input to be zero so i can say output is one similarly one of the input of the second nand gate is zero so that my output q bar is also one and i can immediately say my uncomplement q and the complement q should be different but now we are getting the same that's why again this is unpredictable behavior of the latch 
that means input s bar r bar 0 0 or input s and r 1 1 similar to the sr latch it is an invalid input for us okay, it's an invalid input hence so this particular combination of input is unpredictable for us okay so i can't use this one next moving to the second one when s bar 0 r bar 1 okay so s bar is 0 okay S bar is 0 and R bar is 1 for me. Clear? This is what I have. That means S1 R0. Okay. Complement of S bar R bar. Okay. So, if that is the case and we know that again, when one of the input of an AND gate is 0, output will be simply 1. Okay. I can predict the output of the, the top NAND gate that is first NAND gate. Okay. And now this output acts as an input for the second NAND gate. NAND of 1 and 1 is nothing but what? 0 for me. Right. This is what I get here. Yes. And if you want, you can just make sure that this Q bar goes as an input over here now. And still the output of this first NAND gate is still remains 1 and 0. So, when S bar is 0, R bar is 1 means S1 R0 output is set. Okay. So, this is what we mean by output is set. Clear? This is the third, second input combination of S bar R. Similarly, we go for the next combination of S bar and R bar. Okay. And the next combination of S bar and R bar are 1 and 0 that is s bar 1 okay s bar is 1 whereas r bar is 0 for me so this for this particular input combination we'll try to see what are my q and q bar and we know that one of the input of an and gate is 1 i can't predict and i'll go to the second and gate wherein one of the input for the second and gate is 0 so i can simply say the output of this particular NAND gate it becomes 1 okay irrespective of the other input so this one goes as an input to the first one of the input of the first NAND gate and the NAND of 1 and 1 becomes a 0 for me okay if you take this particular 0 as here okay still there is no change in the output okay so when s bar is 1 and r bar is 0 that is this condition or S0 R1, I go with the reset particular. Okay, so this is the reset thing. Okay, that is three combination is over. The very first 0, 0, S bar R bar. In other words, S1 S and R1, it is unpredictable. That is, it is, a, uh, it is an invalid input. When S bar 0, R bar 1, we mean S1 R0, output is set. When S bar 1, R bar 0, mean S0, R1 output is reset. And we are going to the last combination of SR. Okay, which is the last combination of SR? That is 1 and 1. Okay. So, here we take S to be 1, S, sorry, S bar to be 1, as well as R bar to be 1. It means S and R are 0, 0. Okay, so that's what. Now, you can see that one of the input of the first NAND gate and one of the input of the second NAND gate are 1. I can't predict the output now directly. So, that's why what I'll try to do, I'll try to assume initially, assume let Q is equal to 1 and when Q is equal to 1, we have to make sure that its complement Q bar will be 0. This is what we have to analyze. Okay, so now if that is the case, now this one acts as an one of the input for the second NAND gate and output of the second NAND gate acts as a one of the input of the first NAND gate. This is what we have. Now NAND of 1 0 is what? 1 only. Okay. So for the 1 and 0 it is 1 and the same one goes here. NAND of 1 and NAND it will be 0 for me. Clear now? So when both S bar R bar 1 1, that means S and R 0 0, my output will be its 
previous. So that's why we have specified the output Q plus, if it is a present state, Q will be its previous state. This is case 1. Case 1 means where we assume Q to be 1 and Q bar to be 0. Case 2, still letting my S bar R bar 1 1, that is S and R 0 0. If I assume Q to be 0 and Q bar to be 1, I get the same next state that is 0 and 1. So for 1 1 of S bar R bar or 0 0 of S and R, I get which is the unchanged condition. Okay, so this is all about SR latch. So in SR latch, whether it is a NAND version or a NOR version, okay, okay, when S and R both 0, 0, my output will be its previous. When S0, R1, output will be reset. When S1, R0, output is set. And when both S and R try to be 1, it is an invalid condition. We can't give that particular value. Okay, so if I am using a SR or a NAND gate for an SR latch realization, make sure that your input is complemented. Okay. So, this is SR. This is another version of symbol. So, this is SR using NAND. This is the truth table and this is my symbols. Okay. So, this is all about your SR latch. Next, using this particular SR latch, <coughs> this is an SR latch symbol. So, where in here, output immediately changes with respect to the input change. Okay. That's what. So, we won't have any control on this. Okay. So, what now try to do is, can we will see, okay, as I said in the previous, in the previous slide, we saw whenever there is a change in the input, suddenly my output was changing. Right? Even any spurious change also, my output used to respond to it. Okay. Now, we have to overcome that. Okay, that's why we have made sure one of the input called enable, okay, which we are taking it as something like C. Okay, this is an enable input which you call it as C. What exactly this enable input does means if this enable input C if it is zero, okay, this particular latch is disabled and its output will hold the previous. That's it. Okay, that means if you see the last case in this particular truth table, if C is 0, irrespective of what my S and R does, okay, or value have, my output will be simply follows the previous. If previous is 0, Q will be 0. If previous is 1 means Q will be 1 only. Okay, this is what. Now, instead, if enable C, if it is 1, Okay, then you can see if this is the moment this becomes 1, okay, then whatever the value S and R will be there, it will go as a complement of this. Okay, assume that <coughs> C is 1, now I will go with both S and R 0, 0. So, my S is 0, okay, S is 0 and my R is also 0. Clear now? NAND of 1 and 0 is 1. NAND of 1 and 0 is 1. And we can see that this particular cross coupled NAND gates are nothing but what? S bar R bar latch. When S bar 1, R bar 1 means output will be simply its previous. You can see that here. Whenever S R 0 0, that means S bar R bar 1 1 my output will be its previous. This is what I have. Okay. Next, again, letting the C to be still 1, <coughs> okay, I get the complement of the S here. Okay. So, now we will go with the second combination of inputs that is S0 R1. Okay. S is 0. Okay. And R is 1. Clear now? NAND of 1 and 0 is 1 for me. NAND of 1, 1 is 0 for me. This is S bar R bar latch. S bar 1, R bar 0 or S is equal to 1, R bar is equal to 0. Something you can just go with anyway. S bar is equal to 1, R bar is 0 or S 0, 
R1 means output is reset. Still we have the same thing. Similarly, instead of 0, if I go with now S1 and R0. Okay. So here 1 and 1 becomes 0 for me. Okay. And here 1 and 0 becomes 1 for me. S bar 0, R bar 1 or S is 1, R 0. I will get the third combination which is the set combination. And when still C is equal to 1, when I keep both S and R, both 1, 1 means S bar R bar 0, 0, I get what is called the unpredictable behavior. Okay. So here, the gated SR latch, the difference between a gated SR latch and a simple SR latch is we have in a gated SR latch an enable input. Okay. This actually has a control on the enabling of my latch. If enable is 0, this latch is disabled and output will be holding its previous as we can see in the last option. The moment enable becomes 1, then this acts as a SR latch and this SR latch we have constructed using unmap. This is a symbol for gated SR latch. Okay, Both are gated SR latch. In the, in the first one, it is the complement output only we are taking. In the second, we are taking, we are putting a bubble and we are taking it. Input is Q and output is Q bar. Both are one and the same for me. Okay, this is all about your gated SR. Now, any spurious change in SR, okay, when the system or the latch is disabled, my output doesn't correspond to that change in the SNR. My uh, latch will be enabled only when C or uh, this enable input is one. Otherwise, it will be disabled and any change in SR will be of no significance. Okay, this is what we have. Next, so just now we saw the SR latch, right? Now what we try to do is, we will try to short this S input to R. Okay, if you take, if I just, uh, if I assume that there is no connection between this point and this point, it is simply an SR gated SR latch. Okay, now what I try to do? I try to short S and R through an inverter. Okay, so when I short these two input, it becomes one input and I call that particular input as D now. Okay, this is what is totally a D is all about. Now this D is only one input, right? This is, it can take 0 or 1. And now this is an enable. Again, when enable is 0, you can see in this case, Enable is 0 means, okay, and this is a NAND, top NAND gate and this is the bottom NAND gate, first stage. So, whenever one of the input of the NAND gate is 0 means, output will be simply 1 for these two because this 0 is going as an input, one of the input to this, this the same 0 is going as another input to this one now. So, the output of this is 1 and this is 1 and since this is a SR latch constructed using a NAND, when S bar, R bar, both are 1, 1, my output will be its previous as we can see in the truth table. This is what we will try to have. Okay. This is 1. Next. Now, the moment enable becomes 1, my latch is enabled. Okay. Latch is enabled. Now, you can see D, I will give 0. Okay. If D is 0, the same D0 is going as an input to NAND gate and output of NAND gate I get it as 1. And other input of both these NAND gate of the first stages are 1, 1. The output of this is 1. The output of the bottom first stage NAND gate will be 0. According to the truth table or the uh, behavior of this NAND. Now, S bar 1, R bar 0 or S is 0, R1 output is reset can see that output is reset. This is the first combination of D0 and C is 1 that is the latch is enabled. Next, <coughs> my, when my latch is enabled by providing this enable input 1, now D is 1. Okay, D is 1 and same one goes for the 
top first stage NAND gate and for the bottom one of the input of the uh, bottom uh, NAND gate will be its complement that is 0. You can see that this 2R11 output will become 0 and this is now 1 0 output will become 1. So S bar 0 R bar 1 that means S1 R0 output will be simply set form. Output will be simply set and that's what we have. So you can see now whatever the input is there that is D the same thing is my output right and D here this D we call it as a delay latch or meaning okay in order for this input D to arrive to the output it takes some time and that time we call it as something like a delayed version so that's why we call this as a gated D latch this is the truth table of the gated D latch and these are the symbol of gated D latch D input Q output its complement output and C is the enable output this is all about your gated D latch so we saw SR latch using NOR S bar R bar latch using NAND then we saw the gated SR latch and then we saw the gated D latch okay we can construct a D latch gated D latch from the gated SR latch just by shorting the S and R input through an inverter in this particular fashion we get the D next what will go is something called the JK flip-flop okay you can see that in the previous that is SR flip-flop whenever S is equal to 1 whenever S is equal to 1 okay and R is equal to 1 whenever we have the case S is equal to 1 and R is equal to 1 okay my flip-flop was unpredictable the output yes that means these two were invalid inputs for me right these were invalid inputs for me even though I apply s is equal to 1 and r is equal to 1 in my sr latch I would put I used to get what 0 0 okay the only reason is that is an unpredictable cases okay so these were the invalid inputs so now out of four combination of SR 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 1, 1 input was an invalid. Okay. Now we will try to see can we do something for this. Okay. So in order to do that what we are doing is we are taking this particular combination of logic diagram. Okay. This is my SR latch using NOR. Okay. This is what? This is an SR latch using NOR. This particular two NOR gates okay the cross coupled version of NOR gate 1 and 2 these are simple SR latch using NOR and we have an AND along with an enable okay now what we try to do is here <coughs> wherever <coughs> S was there we are trying to uh, S, K, R was there we are, we, are, we are now giving the variable to be K and wherever S was there, we are trying to give now with respect to J. That's the only difference we have. But now, what we try to do is, we try to take the final output, whatever is there, as an input to the first stage. You can see that. Yes. Q is acting as one of the input to this NAND gate 1. And Q bar is acting as one of the input to this particular AND gate 2. Okay. This is the logic diagram we have. And this particular logic diagram wherein from the output we are getting the input to the feedback I mean the feedback to the input we call it as gated JK latch okay still they are latch okay I said latch is one of the classes of a flip-flop which are level sensitive we will see the level sensitive in the later part okay so now again you can see that JK okay 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 combination of inputs are there again this is valid okay this particular truth table is valid whenever this enable e okay in the previous case we saw it as a c only when this particular enable pin is one okay when until unless this e is becomes one these are not valid okay so when e is equal to one then only i will check with the value of j and k 
the moment e is zero means the moment e is zero means okay the moment e is zero means okay my flip flop is disabled okay when e is zero means my flip flop is disabled meaning it will not be enabled with respect to j and k it will hold its previous value okay so this truth table is corresponds to when e is equal to 1 that's the meaning over here now we'll try to analyze it yeah assuming now or letting e to be 1 okay right e is 1 here e is 1 here you want j i will take j to be 0 k to be 1 or k to be 0 okay i'll take k to be 0 and j to be 1 <coughs> okay this is what we have and now i can simply say that here okay i don't know what is the uh, input over here and what is the input for the this particular because we have to know what is q and q bar q is coming for this and q bar is coming for the bottom uh, and get to this is what we are trying to do now okay <coughs> now as i said we will try to assume q to be 0 and q bar to be 1 for our analysis that's it okay for our analysis we try to assume that previously q is 0 and q bar is 1 so this q goes here okay and this one comes here that's what we are doing now one of the input of an and gate and gate is 0 means output will be 0 and here this and gate all the inputs are 1 so that's why this is 1 clear and now nor gate if one of the input is 1 means output will be 0 so the latest value of q bar is now 0 and this 0 goes as an input for this NAND gate 1. Previously it was 1 but now it is changing that's what it's 1. 0 and 0 of NOR means it becomes 1 for me. You can see that when J, win, J is 1 and K is 0 that is when J is 1 and K is 0 my output is set. So in the similar fashion in SR flip flop when S is 1, R is 0, it was set. Here, J is 1 and K is 0 means it will set. So, I am replacing S by J or I am replacing yeah, J instead of S and I am replacing wherever R was there with K value. So, when S1, R0, that is when J1, K0, output is set. In the similar fashion, in the similar fashion, okay, if K is 1, in the similar fashion, if K is 1, and enable is 1 okay and j is 0 and j is 0 means again I will try to assume q to be 0 and q bar to be 1 okay so this is 0 and 1 and since q bar is 1 the one of the input of the NAND gate, and gate of the first state will be 1 and one of the input of the top and gate will be 0 okay this is what i am trying to do so here the top and gate in the first stage output will be 0 the bottom will be this is also 0 and since we know this is a sr latch using nor when both the inputs are 0 0 output should be the previous what is previous 0 so that's why it will retain the same thing 0 and this will be 1 the next uh, value of q and q bar so when j0 k1 output is reset similar to s0 and r1 output is reset this is what we are having now okay and now j and k both 0 0 now okay this is what we'll try to do now So J0 as well as J and both K, J and K 
zero zero a enable is still one for me okay i assume q to be one and q bar to be zero even you can assume q to be zero or and q bar to be one so this q bar is zero this will be zero for me since this is one the one of the input of the and gate in the first stage is one so this is one zero one it is zero one zero zero again it is zero you can see that now when it is zero zero okay my output will not change it will be one and this will be zero because this is a nor gate it's a sr latch kind of thing when both the inputs are one one it will be zero now assuming okay instead of this to be one zero if i assume this as zero and one keeping my j and k 0 0 i will get this is to be 0 and this is to be 1 so that's why whenever j and k are 0 0 similar to s and r both 0 0 output will never change it will hold its previous if the present state is qt the previous state will be q okay so now we will move on to the last input combination of j k okay my enable is still 1 okay my j and k are 1 1 1 so we had seen in the sr flip flop when both s and r are 1 1 my output was something like an unpredictable okay that means i can say input was invalid now we will try to see what exactly so i i try to assume q to be 1 as case in the previous and q bar to be 0 this is what i am trying to assume okay my jk 1 1 I have enabled the latch assuming q to be 1 and q bar to be 0. Okay. This 0 goes here and this q 1 comes over here. Okay. 1 1 1 output is 1. 1 1 0 output is 0. And we know that a NAND NOR gate, one of the input is 0 means output will be 1. So the latest value of q bar becomes 1 only. And this latest value 1 will go as a input for the top band gate. 1 and 1, sorry, 1 nor 1, it is 0. You can see that, what is happening here? When out, output Q was 1, it is becoming 0, okay, in the next state, okay. Meaning, when both J, K are 1, 1, when, in, when this particular latch is enabled, my output is becoming the complement of the previous. Yes, output is becoming the complement of the previous in the same fashion what we'll try to do now is for the same jk11 with e to be 1 that is this latch is enabled okay both j and k11 now previously we had taken q to be 1 now i'll try it q to be 0 and q bar to be 1 we'll see we do we do we get the next state to be zero or next state to be one or what exactly okay since q is zero this will go over here okay since q bar is one this will come over here now one one zero this is zero and gate output one 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 this is one and we know that one of the input of an or gate zero means output will be one and this is zero this latest one will go here and this becomes 0 and if this latest 0 goes here still my output remains 1 only. you can see that whenever j and k are 1 1 output qt will be its complement of the previous okay this was invalid in the sr latch when both s and r were 1 1 but now just giving a feedback from the output stage to the input stage in this fashion we are ensuring the jk11 is giving me a valid state at the output but that valid is a complement okay so now we have overcome the sr11 in this jk11 okay so whichever invalid state was there for an sr latch is now overcome in the jk flip flop so jk is similar to sr just one modification is we are giving a feedback from the our final output stage to the 
first input stage. Yeah. So now we can define the truth table of this gated SR as when JK both 0, 0 similar to the SR both 0, 0 output will be its previous. When J0, K1 that is S0, R1 output is reset. Similarly, J1, K0 that means S1, R0 output is set. And the last S and R11 which were invalid over there now becoming a valid input for JK but the output is the complement of the previous. So you can see that 0, 0 gives me the previous value whereas 1, 1 input of JK gives me the complement. This is what the JK flip flop and the gated JK flip flop has an advantage over to the gated SR latch in which the input 1 1 condition is valid in gated JK latch and the output will be its complement. Okay, so this is what the gated JK latch. So in this lecture, we saw the SR latch using NAND, then we end, uh, started with the gated SR latch. Then we converted gated SR latch to gated D and then whichever the uh, drawback was there in my SR latch that we can overcome using the gated J. Okay, so we will stop here and we will continue the session in the next lecture. Thank you.